Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Oakland County Parks and Recreation's Nature Education Team. Each week we're going to be offering a video, craft, and activity on a nature topic. This week we're going to be talking about um, attracting birds to your backyard using a bird feeding station. So let's get out there and see what we can find. Okay, everyone, now that you're ready to set up a feeding station in your yard, let's talk about the things that you will need for your feeding station. The first thing that you're gonna need is a type of food. So here at the Nature Center in Independence Oaks, we use black oiler sunflower seeds that are um, that's graciously donated by the Gateway in Clarkston. Um, there are many different types of food choices that you can use, but we're going to talk about those a little bit later when we're talking about the different types of feeders that you can purchase. Okay, now that we have our food choice, let's talk about water. You need to have a source of water in your bird feeding station. Um, here at the Went Nature Center, we have a large uh, bowl that the birds can use, but we also have other creatures that get in there as well. Um, so when um, you have this bowl of water out, you wanna make sure you are cleaning it and changing out the water regularly. If you um, let it sit too long, it's gonna grow stagnant and it'll become a um, nice little place for mosquito larvae to grow. It will have bacteria in it and algae that can become harmful to the animals that use it. Um, also, when you're cleaning it, just make sure you're scrubbing it really well and not using harsh chemicals to kill anything that's growing in it um, because then that's going to actually harm the other um, wildlife that is using that water source. Okay, everyone, now that we have the food and water taken care of, let's talk about the next thing, and that is consistency. The more that you are keeping your bird feeders filled, the birds will learn that that is a constant food source that you that they can return to day after day. Um, if they have fledglings, they will actually bring those to the bird feeder and teach them how to use the bird feeders as well. So as long as you are keeping them filled on a consistent basis, the larger your bird feeding following will be. Okay, the last thing that you need for your uh, bird feeding station is safety for the other birds. Um, a lot, you need to have cover for them, uh, lots of little landing places, um, because if a predator like a hawk comes through, they need to be able to um, kind of have places to move around and get away from that bird. There are lots of hawks that prey on other birds and a bird feeding station is an easy place for them to find their prey. So make sure that you have a good cover area and lots of places for them to land on. Hi folks, I'm Mary with Oakland County Parks and Recreation's Nature Education Team. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about state and city ordinances regarding bird feeders. Bird feeders can attract animals such as deer, raccoons, squirrels, chipmunks, mice, and rats to your area. So you'll want to make sure you check those ordinances and comply. The DNR has a bait ban for deer, so you're going to want to make sure that you check out this resource and also check out their website for some more tips and tricks. Some things, simple tips and tricks that you can do are keep your the bottom of your feeders at least six feet from the ground, use wire fencing or another material we're, we've used driftwood to kind of uh, exclude the deer from the bird feeding area so they can't get to the feeders. And make sure you're only putting out enough feed that your birds will eat in a day or pull your feeders at night to help discourage uh, some of our nocturnal friends from feasting at your feeders as well. Okay, hey everyone, this is one of our bird feeding stations here at the Awit Nature Center. You can see there's a little white-breasted nuthatch he just flew away. Um, so you can see we use a lot of, um, you know, downed logs and trees and things like that. 
for perches and to try to keep the deer out of our feeding station. We have a large water feature. If you have a water feature like ours here that is deeper, um, that, hold, that has the water in it, just make sure you put something in there that if an animal happens to fall in, they can use the sticks or whatever you have in there to help them get out of the water. Hi everyone. Now let's talk a little bit about what you might see at the feeders. You're not going to be able to see every type of bird at the feeder and that's because of the different diets that they have. The birds that you're going to see at your feeder feed mainly on seeds, berries, and suet. Um, the other types of birds are going to be like this hawk here. He's going to eat um, meaty type prey. So like other birds or small mammals, that type of uh, prey. Um, then you might have the robins or the woodcocks. They're going to eat um, worms and insects that are on the ground. Um, the other type of birds are the ones that eat the flying insects. So like this bluebird or swallows that you have near your house. Um, but the types of birds that you're going to see on your bird feeders are um, like this cardinal here or a black capped chickadee or blue jays. Um, the tufted titmouse is another type of bird that you might see. Um, right, white-breasted nuthatches, downy woodpeckers, red-bellied woodpeckers like this one right here, um, the red-headed woodpecker like this one here, um, and also hairy woodpeckers. Those are the ones that you're going to see year-round at your bird feeders. The ones that you got, might see seasonally because they're migrants are the rose-breasted grosbeak, the indigo bunting, and the dark-eyed junco. Oh, also, if you put out a hummingbird feeder, the, uh, the hummingbird is also going to be a migratory um, feeder. So you will not see these guys year round. Now let's talk about what to include in your backyard bird feeding station. There are a variety of types of bird seeds that you can use to attract birds to your yard. Some examples are black oilers, thistle seeds, millet, and seed mixes. You can also use cracked corn or other things as well. You can purchase uh, pre-mixed bags or you can mix your own. And there's a variety of different types of bird feeders that you can purchase to put those feed in to dispense in different ways. We're gonna get to, into a little bit of that next. Next, we're going to talk about hummingbird feeders. So hummingbirds are a migratory species, and you can expect them in this area around May 15th, depending, of course, seasonally and yearly on the weather. So to help them on their journey, you can start placing consistently a hummingbird feeder out around that time. You'd like to choose a hummingbird feeder that um, is easy for you to change because you don't want to leave the nectar out for too long as bacteria can harm the birds. Choosing a bright and colorful feeder is preferred to dyeing the nectar red. Um, so when you choose a feeder, you can use one like this one that um, uses suction cups to attach to the window, or you can use one like this one that you hang out every day. Next, we're going to talk about suet. So you can do suet in either a suet log like this, which is homemade with um, this homemade miracle meal, uh, which is made out of Crisco and cornmeal and some other things. Or you can go with the pre-made version, which are these suet cakes, um, and they go in a suet cage like this. Suet will attract different types of woodpeckers and our miracle meal attracts nut hatches, chickadees, and other things as well. Um, so you have a variety of choices and the birds really love it. Another homemade bird feeder you can do is this guy right here. And this is a Baltimore Oriole feeder. So Baltimore Orioles, when they come through in the early spring, really like jam and oranges. So this feeder is just a coat hanger with some washers on it and you stick the oranges right on there and hang it up outside. And um, we do actually get Orioles at this feeder. 
We've also had a little bit of luck with putting out um, some different jellies and they come in and they eat it right up. Lastly, let's talk about squirrels. To feed or not to feed. Squirrels are attracted to bird feeders in your yard and um, there's different types of feeders you can use. Some encourage squirrels and some help to exclude them from your feeders. You can purchase a feeder that has a spring in it so it allows the birds to feed but if a squirrel steps on the feeder it pulls the feeder closed denying them the seeds. You, if you choose to feed squirrels, platform feeders or feeders like this corn feeder are great options. Just be careful about how much seed ends up on the ground because this can attract other less desirable rodents like mice and rats. Good luck putting it all together. So now that we've talked about all the different feeder types, pick one or two and uh, hang them up in your yard, either with a shepherd's hook on a tree or a post or something like that. Make sure to put seed out consistently and in a few weeks, you'll have a consistent birdie fan base. Thank you for joining us and make sure to leave your pictures and experiences with your bird feeders in the comments below. Check out our social media for more videos and activities and keep an eye on our website for park and nature center hours, amenities, and different programming we might have coming up. Stay safe, get outside, and join us next time.